Sikh reporter with a turban in Washington, D.C. So we're not just telling people who the Sikhs are, we're showing them that they we're part of the American fabric. Here we have Harpreet Kaur and Manmeet Singh, founder of Such Productions. Harpreet Kaur recently won an Emmy for producing a segment in the TV show Maryland Farm and Harvest, making her the first Sikh woman to ever win an Emmy. Such Productions is recognized for making the documentary The Widow Colony, India's Unsettled Settlement, which has been praised by members of the, of the United States Congress, Canadian Parliament, and Parliament in the UK. Such Productions also recently made A Little Revolution, a story of suicides and dreams, which has reached the same level of popularity. Harpreet is a graduate of Pennsylvania State University, and she started her career as a reporter in the D.C. metropolitan area. So, you guys founded Such Productions. Can you tell us more about what it is and why you founded it? Yeah, my name is Manmeet Singh, and uh, I have some role in Such <laughs> Productions as well. Uh, shortly after 9-11, we were driving back. There was a lot of trauma uh, with what had happened and there was anxiety of what's about to happen, especially with the Sikh community. And uh, you see some of those concerns of hate crimes are even relevant today, and it's 2019. So at that point, we decided that we really need an outlet that's able to produce high quality work, because Harpreet was already in the production field. So she was working on a cable news channel in Washington, D.C as a news reporter, the first news reporter in the DC area. And so she had the technical expertise and with her degree in, in, in film and all of that, we thought that we really don't even have any kind of film that talks about who the six are, Guru Nanak, there's, not, there's no documentary in Guru Nanak, there's no documentary that talks about our issues. So we started making films on who the six are, what our concerns are, and what our heritage is, whether it's musical heritage, things of that nature. So such production became that outlet to make all of these films that are important for us. It's education for our own people and for the outside world as well. And then the films that you just spoke about, those were bigger, more riskier ventures because that involved more finance, more time commitment, a bigger crew, and, uh, but they were extremely successful. So one of the first films we actually made, a short film, after we started such productions was, right after 9-11, was We Are Six, um, which we actually just launched on YouTube eventually. We showed it at schools and libraries and a lot of venues, and now it's available for people to view. And it's a great short film because it's a visual, I mean, being in um, film, everything is visual. So it's very colorful. You see kids tying their turbans, males, females, a um, lot of great music. We actually have Sanatam Kaur, who has given the music track in that film. So it's done really well, and it's still being shown today. And that's the type of films that we want to create that go beyond our lifespan. So that's our legacy, our film work. OK, so how is the transition between a reporter in the DC area and to the such productions? making documentaries. Um, when I was working in as a news reporter, it was great, but we were working on a, with a certain, certain format, and you, your creative um, creativity is limited, basically, because you're just doing what you're, you can do, tell a, a package in a minute and a half. And I kind of felt like my um, reporting was incomplete. I mean, my news director was satisfied. I gave them what they wanted, but for me, it wasn't enough. So at the same time as I was working as a news reporter, I was making these documentaries after 9-11, these short films. And I eventually had to make a decision if I'm going to go full time with such productions or continue being a news reporter. And after three years of being a news reporter, I did the transition and went full time into documentary filmmaking. And I had more creative control. So it just gives you, there's so many stories that need to be told. And I think with news, I was very limited. But it did give me the, sorry, it did give me the foundation because I was able to learn how to operate equipment, um, how to produce, go out there and interview, the research process. It was a great learning platform for me as a news reporter. Okay, so um, before such productions, what were you doing in 
nothing very important. Just, I mean, I was uh, with the Fortune 500 company as a finance and operation uh, director, and uh, but my passion has always been in the arts side, music, film, uh, fine arts, architecture, etc., food, travel, and. Uh, but I, the kind of music that I enjoy is very serious music, classical music. And the kind of film work that I enjoy is also very serious in nature. So first I congratulate Nishkam TV, you guys, and all the other volunteers and workers to put in the time, the investment on, to start this venture. Because you scratch your head, you're like, should I really get started? It's a big endeavor. And we want to continue on for a very long time and uh, dedicate a lot of my time so that we can educate people on important issues. So ours wasn't, we weren't ready to start a channel as such, and we just didn't have the bandwidth. So we were like, okay, let us create important works. And at that point, uh, what I was doing was enough to sustain ourselves as a family uh, and Harpreet decided that she wanted to quit her daytime job and go full-time with such productions. So that worked out because I could support her, but then once you go in that venture, it is a very expensive venture in terms of raising funds, getting a crew together, going to India, then going back to India, then traveling over there, taking your equipment there, buying new equipment, bringing it back, taking it to the studios for editing, Things were a little bit different. I, you know, uh, offline editing was just taking off. I mean, in your first job, you actually had online editing had where you were going through tapes and cutting the tapes and switches and all of that. So we were just going into that digital era. You know, HD wasn't even popular at that. Well, it's birthing at that time. I mean, things are so, so much more easier everything now. Is, so yeah. it's really it is inspiring to see Nishkam TV and encouraging the youth, young people. It's amazing to see you right here interviewing me and the, all these young faces behind the camera, sound person, learning all these things. It's just, it's really heartwarming because we want to see the next generation step up. So, I mean, we want to have people out there who are making important films, telling our stories. So I, yeah, I hats off to all of you and your team. It's really inspiring because I, you can, you can learn and I say this to everyone, you can learn how to use equipment. You can learn what goes behind interviewing somebody, um, asking the important questions. But it's difficult to learn how to tell a story. That comes from within. So the hardest part is finding the stories you want to tell and putting everything into it and telling those stories. That can't be taught. That has to be felt. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, but you were the first sick woman to mm -hmm. ever win Sure. So I work for Maryland Public Television. I'm a producer for a show called Maryland Farm and Harvest. And we've got over 12,000 farms in Maryland. So for our show, we go around Maryland, finding the farms that we want to highlight. And every season, it's got to be a different farm. You can't repeat farms. And we tell stories about dairy. Where does the food come from? Um, the importance of the food. Um, putting a face to Maryland agriculture. So when people are driving, I actually our show, Maryland Farm and Harvest, is one of the most highly watched shows on Maryland Public Television. It's very popular because it's entertaining and people like to hear about food. And when, they, when people think about farming, they just say cornfields and tractors. But when they watch our show, there's so much more to it. You know, you've got dairy, dairy to milk, dairy to yogurt, beef stories. So all our stories are very entertaining and they've got action and movement and so the awards actually uh, those are part of the territory and in the field of media so you get your award and next day you're back to work um, you enjoy that moment when it happens but people are like what did you do what happened I'm like yeah that was a great moment you feel good and it's awesome um, and you feel like your work has been acknowledged and that's a great feeling because you work all year round you get a paycheck but when you get that award, that's, you know, that just endorses that you're doing the right thing. So that was a great feeling. And then Monday I was back at work. So, and that just encourages you to keep on going. So you guys are raised in Maryland. Uh, what can you tell us about the sick community in Maryland? Sorry? What can you tell us about the sick community in Maryland? 
Uh, the Sikh community in Maryland is really like any other big city. You're in Washington, D.C., the mid-Atlantic area. We've got about, I'd say, 12 to 15 Gurdwaras. Uh, and uh, if you really want to size it, you should come to one of the Melas. You'll see 10,000 cars, <laughs> free entry. It's happening. Actually, the big thing that's happening this year is August 31st, 2019. We're going to do a big commemorative event for the 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. And they're going to be on the National Mall. Thousands of people coming from all over. So I think the Washington, D.C. community is a very mature community. They're very closely uh, uh, following what happens at Capitol Hill. So from a political viewpoint, they're very engaged. So that's why you've got organizations like SALDEF, you've got SICK Coalition, you've got um, such productions, you've got a lot of educational institutes like Guru Angad Institute of SICK Studies, which is the biggest Gurmat Sangeet uh, school. In fact, if you ever come to Washington, D.C. area, that's a school you really should see because you see, you see a school where you'll see 50 Dilrabas, you know, 10 Sarangis and all of this. It's a phenomena that's nowhere else in North America. Then you've got other institutes where they do a lot of Sikhi Prachar outside the Gurdwara. You've got Core Foundation, which is one of them. So that's why when such productions came in, we were like, okay, we're going to focus purely on media. And that's why when you look at Washington, D.C., and I would say America in general, you know, the dynamics of Sikhs in America, they are more progressive, they're more panthic. If you see Europe, Europe tends to be more orthodox. Um, I India is, of course, very traditional in its following of Sikhism. So uh, America is always just out there in terms of understanding Sikhism and then trying to promote it. That's why Nishkam started here and not in New Delhi. <laughs> and then connecting it back to the film stuff, I was raised in Maryland, so we've screened around the whole world, but the screening that really felt good was when we did it back home and I showed The Widow Colony the first time and A Little Revolution the first time in the theater. And all the Gurdwaras, I mean, putting all their political and their differences aside, everybody showed up it was amazing the response was great and it felt like okay this is my family and it was such a great feeling and i told Manmeet, we screened everywhere we screened in the parliament and those are great achievements but seeing your sangat support you that is that just that makes you fly so that was a great feeling so for such productions what are your hopes for the future of the company well um we want to creep keep creating meaningful television, um, films, um, issue-based things, um, whether it's documentaries or narratives. Um, like I said, we want our films to be our legacy. People always talk about names or kids. For us, our legacy is our films. And we want, um, like you can go 50 years from now on the shelf, you'll find The Widow Colony and you'll be educated about 1984. And it's the only film out there, the first film, on the widows, giving them the opportunity to tell their story, to testify. And the whole film, there's only seven minutes narration in the 60-minute film. So the rest is all told by the widows and the subject matter experts. Yeah, I think um, here's how I see it. There's Jut and Juliet. It's a great movie. People laugh about it. But nobody even knows that there's a Jut and Juliet too. I haven't seen it. But in 10 years, nobody will really care for it or remember it. But there's a part of Punjabi cinema where there was Longda Lishkara or Chand Pradesi. It became classics. And the shelf life of those films is generational. So when it comes to such production or a film like The Widow Colony, if you go see The Widow Colony, even today, it, it will move you to your core. And it is such a profoundly serious endeavor in terms of sick films, sick storytelling, that, you know, even today, we are into the 34, 15 years after it was made and released, it is one of the most important works done in sick cinema. And it only talk, not just talks about the condition of the women in 1984, but it's also a statement of at that period, we were able to gather the funds, the organization, the maturity to say, okay, we need to document the story of these women 
and now some of them don't even live anymore. So now you have a document of their voices, of their stories. And then we ventured into uh, a film about farmers committing suicide. You have sick people who were warriors and generals and we fought the Afghans and the British and we have a phenomenon where they're taking their own lives. Why is it? What's happened to the children? And then we went and made a film on farmer suicide. And guess what? Five to seven years after that, every election campaign, every newspaper covers stories about farmer suicides in Punjab. It's, it's come into your daily dialogue. So film made that happen. We showed it in think tanks in Chandigarh, in Patiala, elsewhere in New Delhi, and forced the dialogue that this is happening. You're not going to go to the villages of Punjab. And that we knew. So we decided we we're going to bring the villages of Punjab to our screens. So I will, you know, Harpreet and I, we will volunteer to lend you the film so you can show it on your channel so that people see it and understand how important these issues are. So. And the films that brought people together. When the Widow Colony was screened, we had six Hindus, Muslims who came out. Yeah. And people spoke. I mean, we had a Muslim guy who said, I came here just to see what noise you guys are creating and this hate between Hindu, Sikhs and Muslims. And he goes, I'm ashamed. Today I leave as a better person after watching this film. And he had tears in his eyes because he said, for the first time in my life, I understand what happened in 1984. This is the truth. So the power of media is amazing. And when you hear that kind of feedback, you know you've made the right film and you've told the right message. Yeah, we showed in like 15 to 20 festivals. I think only two of the festivals were Sikh festivals. Mm -hmm. They were all non-Sikhs and Indian festivals. And the India, in, what was it, Asian India Festival in New well, York? Well, we start, opened it in IFLA, International mm -hmm. Film Festival of LA. Mm -hmm. Deepa Mehta was there you know, with her film Water, which she released. That was on Widows also at that year. Mm -hmm. Nasruddin Shah was there. Steven Soderbergh was there. Steven Soderbergh was there. And we opened our film over there and it, it was phenomenally received. Uh, Anurag Kashyap, who's a big name, he came and he's like, he's like, Manmi Dhai Aapki documentary Kamal Ki So, you know, people saw that we seriously want to create document. How many, how many Sikh documentaries are out there that talk about the Sikh Raj or the Sikh issues or, you know, economic issues, cultural issues? Nothing. It's all just entertainment cinema, which is great. It helps Punjabi that it brings out other advantages. But something that lives through generation, we, we really need to seriously think in investing that. Okay, so you guys are doing great work for the Sikh community, and we thank you for everything that you've done. Um, and we hope to see more powerful pieces like um, the one about widows and farmer suicides in the future. Well, thank you. Thank you thank for you. talking with us. Good luck to the Nishkan team. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you.